Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the issue of booster packs being $9.99 and why that is not good for the game. Before we begin with that issue, I do want to commend Wizards of the Coast with their new master set. It looks like we may get two master sets a year and we may have duplicate print runs on each master set. So like Eternal Masters, we had a second print run, no matter how you define it, it was a doubling of supply. Now, that is good. I Reprints are very good if you are a magic player or if you are a collector. A true collector is someone who doesn't want to necessarily make money from their collection. I have a wall of foil filias in my office and they look beautiful. I don't care if they reprint it because I just enjoy collecting it. I enjoyed trading for them. I enjoyed buying them. I enjoyed all aspects of collecting uh, the different languages, etc. So if you are into MTG finance, this is not good news for you. If you have a very large collection and you don't actually play with the magic cards and you just kind of store them to hope, I don't know, one day it goes up in value, this is not good news for you. They are reprinting like crazy, right? We have Commander Anthology where we get a Kalia. I think it's going to come in foil if I'm correct. We get a foil Kalia of the Vast. It's been a long time since we've seen her. And we get Commander 2017. We get four tribal decks. We may get a conspiracy here or there. Uh, a additional set in the summertime. And we get m iconic masters, which seems to be different from eternal and different from modern. It's like a combination of both. So overall, the only issue I have is with the $9.99 price tag. Why is this such an issue? It kind of hampers the ability for players to actually get cards. And honestly, it's just a tad bit greedy. So when Modern Masters 1 happened, it was $6.99 a pack, but given it was the first product of its type and the fact that the supply was exceedingly limited, what happened was the packs were selling for $9.99, $12.99, although the MSRP was $6.99. Now, Wizard of the Coast has controlled the MSRP, and you can get boxes for under $240 quite easily of Eternal Masters or Modern Masters 2017. That is a big win that a store, a local store, is not able to gorge or sell online their product for $300 a box like the original Modern Masters. They are more willing to allow the people to draft. And that gets to my concern. If this is a draftable format, $9.99 a pack means it's $30 a draft, right, at retail. And whatever the price support is, maybe it's half a price, half a pack, $5 price support, maybe it's just a really crappy FNM promo. Regardless, at $30 a draft, just for your packs, that's too much. Most Magic players are not going to be able to afford that. And even if they were able to afford it, it might just be better to do a $10 draft. Or uh, My locals, we have $10 drafts and they go a very well. So I see the solution to this problem being to make these packs $6.99. That is my solution. I think a lot more, more people will buy it. They would sell a ton more packs, maybe their profit margin. It's got to come down to calculation. They have to be able to sell more packs and make up for the larger $3 in just essentially money that they get from selling from $9.99 a pack. Now, can they do it? Yes. Will they do it? That's a different question. Overall, I've seen a, a trend and the trend is the secondary market is absolutely gutted. We finally see Tamagoy want a version of Tamagoy for under $100. That is amazing and fantastic. I own a playset of Tamagoy and I own a foil one, but nothing makes me happier to, than knowing that more people will be able to play the game. It's not a mystery. I own a large collection of magic cards and some of them like Lily and some of them like 
Balia and some of them like Malera. I just like collecting. But I understand that they will be reprinted. And when they are reprinted, I'm going to collect more. I'm not going to be cry and say, oh my goodness, they destroyed my collection. Boo hoo hoo, right? No, I'm going to say, cool, I can start collecting more. And that's the difference between a collector and a speculator. The collector is going to view that as an opportunity to continue to collect. Uh, very similar to, uh, I collect a lot of other things, um, including art books. And some art books get incredibly expensive. In Houston, there was a store called My Domi, and there was a graphic design library. I was able to buy the entire library when they went out of business on consignment. I think it was like 550 bucks, and it was 800 or thousand dollars. Nothing makes me happier than to build up my library with very awesome pieces of art books. I'm not. I'm never going to sell any of them because I just enjoy having a library, and that's the same way I treat magic cards. I enjoy putting them in the little frames, and then putting them in the office, or putting them in my, my work office at home, or the office in downtown. That's the big difference, and that's why I want this product to be available to everyone. Now, I think $3.99 a pack is probably too much, but I don't see why they cannot do $6.99 a pack, or I think $3.99 a pack is too little. $6.99 a pack, they've done it in the past, so the price increase really came out of nowhere, and had we made more noise about it when it like increased during Modern Masters 2015, instead of just been like super excited that we got another modern master set which honestly wasn't the best or it could have been a lot better they could have put tamagorf in that set as well or uh, not tamagorf they could have put better cards in that set to balance out especially the uncommons so at the end at the very end of the day i commend them for making this product making iconic masters doing doubling down on the master sets every year redoing the commander decks they'll continue to do the commander decks making conspiracy which also has a lot of valuable staples like it has surprisingly a lot of money in it show and tell i think sneak attack and even the new cards are very good so i just hope that they make the patch cheaper 9.99 especially for a draft quotation draftable format where they encourage you to draft it. $30 a draft is too much money for a draft. And it's the simple economic factor that if they made it $6.99, I feel like they would sell enough and player base would be happier and then prices would go down more. The only reason we have not seen a $50 Tamagoyf is due to the sticker price of $10 a booster pack. There are plenty of unopened boxes and from all the major retailers. Plenty. If you made it cheaper, people would open more of it, and then there would be more singles, and then for the price of the Tamagoyf would go down. That's just one example. Overall, I commend them. Prices have tanked like crazy. Uh, when I mean prices have tanked like crazy, the 15 to 20 percent, I consider that a lot, given the fact like the enemy fetch lands, you have to buy them in four. You have to buy four of them to use. A lot of these cards like Lily, Snap, you need four of them. So any percentage saving is compounded by the fact of just the sheer amount that you need of each of these cards. It's not like you can just buy one, maybe for EDH, but in modern, it's not like you buy one Tamagoyf and like, cool, I can put this one Tamagoyf in my deck. If you're going to buy one, you're probably going to commit to four uh, if you don't already have the additional ones to make up for it. If you do have two, then you're probably going to commit to two, and you're like, okay, I have two, and there's two at a cheaper price. So overall, I'm very happy that the secondary market is the way it is. I feel like this will be a trend to continue on. Wizards of the Coast, as well as the new CEO, Chris Cox, I bet you he's looking at this from the perspective of why don't we just sell packs? Because that's how we make money. And then people, oh, no, we can't put the cards in. We cannot put the Tamagoyf in the Modern Master 2017. Too much value. We can't put the Damnation in. I mean, I would just say the biggest change is we got Damnation. How many times did people complain about Damnation? And then finally, we got a new CEO, and we have Damnation as a non-mythic. And Lily. People were afraid that Damnation meant no Lily. But why can't we have both? Why can't we have the fetches, too? I mean, for Iconic Masters, why can't we get 10 fetch lands? 
like it's ten dollars a pack that would be amazing <laughs> 10 rares at over ten dollars would be so sick right like it would be a ton of fun if it was just like land <laughs> it was the filter land 10 filter lands 10 shock lands and again i own a lot of shock lands and i'm trying to build like a poster of them so go them going down them tanking in price i'm totally okay with and Iconic Masters might include shock lands because it are filter lands. Because everything else has been reprinted. Why not? Overall, they I think this strategy makes a lot of sense. I am very, very happy where, where Wizard of the Coast is pushing the secondary market, which means cheaper singles, cheaper standard, because we have the masterpiece. I didn't expect the masterpiece to work. I'm gonna make a longer video. I expected that to epically fail, but everything else, the numbers don't lie. Standard is the cheapest it's been for a while. We don't have Jace Vince Prodigy, which is a $100 card. The only reason it's a $100 card is because speculators make it so. That's it. I, I mean, is that card worth $100? Is the best card in standard worth $100? And today's standard, the best card is, or the most expensive card is Liliana. The Last Hope at $35. She's pretty dominant. Or Gideon's at less than $30. And he's very dominant. He's been on every Pro Tour Top 8 ever since he's been printed. So is Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, less of a powerhouse in the current standard, which every deck pretty much plays them in white, than Jace? I would say no. They're comparable. I mean, Gideon has been... Do he's been in the pro he's been top eating everything all the time getting out of zendikar and he's under 30 dollars you don't need a hundred dollar card why do you need getting out of zendikar to be a hundred dollar card you you don't you honestly do not and the, the experiment has turned out to be very good i i believe it would fail and i felt like people would stop buying the masterpieces but what i didn't recognize was you, you don't need that many people to buy the masterpieces to begin with. You just need like a few. So you don't need a million people to be like, oh, masterpieces. You just need like that one guy at your card shop with a lot of money buying them. And that's it. You, you don't need like, you don't even need like 20 people to buy them in your shop. You just need one. And then that person will keep buying it, keep buying it, and, and pretty much subsidize the rest of us in terms of standard. So overall, very happy with it. I just kind of wish that they would reduce the price. $9.99 is too much, guys. Uh, and the other tidbit is if they put this in Target and Walmart, that would be pretty cool. And Barnes & Nobles. I don't know how Magic product gets to Barnes & Nobles, but my Barnes & Nobles is stocked with like old product. And it's always like not on discount. Strange, right? Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Talk to you later. Bye.